Is your business pootling along? Instead of firing on all cylinders. Are you feeling overwhelmed, stressed and frustrated? Do your dreams of financial freedom feel a long way off? Then this is the podcast for you. Little Voice, Big Business, with your host, Nadia Finer. Welcome to Little Voice, Big Business, with me, Nadia Finer. I'm here to help you grow your businesses. And today we have a question from Jeanette about her digital magazine. Hi, Nadia, it's Jeanette here. Right, my question for you is... How do you specifically market to the teenage market? I have very teen-specific branding that I want to get out there. I've been using Facebook at the moment. I know that Facebook isn't big for teenagers. However, it is free, which is the um, overall advantage to it. But now I need to really get it out there. I've got, obviously, you've got Instagram and Snapchat and things like that. But I really need to look at how to get my brand marketed out there to teenagers. Just to clarify a bit more, it's a teen magazine. It's a digital online magazine and it's totally free to access to people. It comes out monthly. The Facebook page also tells you what's going on, things around the world for teenagers that are interested. There's an app being launched in September, a fierce and fresh app, which is coming out in September, which will help a lot. But I just need to know how to get it out there, how the teenagers are going to interact with it and look at it and really be one step ahead of them in technology and what's going on. So if you can help, I would really much appreciate it. And thanks very much. Bye. Okay, thanks, Jeanette. So I'm assuming that you're not a teenager yourself and that's going to make things pretty tricky. Teenagers are extremely elusive. They're hard to reach and hard to predict. And so by creating a teen magazine, you've really got your work cut out. However, there are things you can do and it's definitely an exciting audience to be working with. Teenagers are the early adopters. They're the trendsetters. They're the key influencers, the ones who try things out before everybody else and then months, perhaps even years later, we grown-ups, shall I call us grown-ups as opposed to old duffers? Yeah, grown-ups, we follow in their tracks and yeah, they're the ones alerting us to the latest fashions, the latest technology and we are then persuaded to buy for them if they're our kids but also we're persuaded later on that it's cool because they've tested it out for us so it's really interesting but just talking about it makes me feel a bit old i have to admit but the reason i think it's challenging for you jeanette is that marketing to a group of people who are different to you is really not easy but getting it wrong is really easy Even if you think about multinational million dollar companies, they get it wrong too. And I know this isn't a teen example, but I'm sure we all remember the South African BIC advert, which came out recently. Designed to celebrate Women's Day, they launched us some pink pens because we're that shallow. (laughs) Make it pink if you want us to like it. But anyway, that's a rant for another day. So this BIC advert was clearly not created in conjunction with any women at all. It featured an image of a businesswoman, you know, in inverted commas, with her arms folded across her chest and there was a message that said, now, wait for it people, this is uh, (laughs) pretty extreme. It said, look like a girl, act like a lady, think like a man work like a boss. Hashtag happy women's day. So act like a lady, think like a man, WTF. Thanks very much, Bic. But um, you see in this example how easy it is to get it wrong when you're clearly not one of your target audience. So Jeanette, your magazine is aimed at teenagers and you're finding it hard to reach them. Well, 
Teenagers are very discerning, and so are all children, in fact. I know I'm constantly surprised by Jacob, who's seven, the way he dismisses stuff as lame. I mean, lame? You're seven. You're supposed to like things that are lame. But I think the only way to understand what your audience want and how to reach them is to actually involve them and listen to them a lot. I'm not talking a one-off focus group here. I'm talking about bringing these guys into the magazine. First up, I've got a question though. Your niche, are you aiming to target teenagers in the local area or do you have a wider audience in mind? I think local is great because there's clearly not a lot going on in the area and no other competition, you know, there's no other magazine for teenagers in the area. So that already gives you a point of difference. It's easier to reach out to people who live nearby as well. And it gives people a reason, gives the teenagers in the local area a reason to sit up and listen because you're creating something that appeals directly to them. So firstly, I'd suggest maybe making it clearer that that is the case. And then we can move on to what I think needs to be done. So rather than trying to be like teenagers and stalking them, I think that your magazine could potentially be by teenagers for teenagers. If you kind of steer the boat and make sure that things stay under control and things get done properly, there's no reason why you can't bring these guys on board to run the magazine. There does seem to be some content from teenagers in the magazine, but I do think the balance could be improved. Get them writing for you, doing your marketing and reaching out to their peers. It will come across as a lot more authentic and a lot cooler and less kind of like a bunch of mums trying to tell them what to do. I think that teenagers, and I still have a bit of this by the way in me, but... uh, teenagers don't like to be told what to do and I think if your goal is to educate them through the magazine it's not going to necessarily get shared or spread around teenagers by the teenagers themselves because it can come across as a bit like your mum telling you what to do. So if we can bring in some more teens and get them actively involved crowdsource some content so get people reblogging tumblr posts use crowdsourcing methods to find some great content and create a kind of creative committee or board where people can feel the kids can come in and feel part of it they need to take responsibility for sharing and reaching out for their peers i mean it's a really good opportunity for them Considering the fact that a lot of uh, young people would love the opportunity to work on a magazine, it's not like you've created a scaffolding company for teenagers. No, you've created a magazine. It's cool. A lot of young people would love the opportunity to work in journalism, in the media, so you're creating those opportunities. So I'd use that to your advantage and give them the opportunity to get some experience to build their careers. The (laughs) the teenagers, it sounds so lame when I say it, but these young people, they know what's cool and they know what's not cool. And I think we need to get them on board as a kind of filter so that the stuff you're putting out there is definitely cool and not try hard because that is a massive turn off for people. And I think, you know, you mentioned that you weren't sure which social media platform to go for next. Well, we're pretty sure that Facebook is not the place to reach out to them. So you need to go and see them and ask them where they want to be. You know, is it Tumblr? Is it Snapchat? And what are they doing? And get them in charge of the social media accounts because they know how it works for their audience. And... You know, obviously you can give some guidance and steer them in the right direction and make sure it comes from a strategic place and not just completely random. But I think that it will definitely, definitely help. I love Facebook, but I'm 37. (laughs) 
I'm too old to know what teenagers want. You know, I'm not cool, even if I think I am with my cool sneakers, they probably think I look like a total loser. So we know that teenagers are ditching Facebook in their droves and they're heading over to things like Instagram and Tumblr. But then there's all these new ones too, you know, there's Blab and Periscope. So ask them what they're into and get them to show you and get them to run it for you. Obviously, that's also great because you'll have a lot less work to do for yourself. But it will be a lot more authentic, which is obviously a good thing. Okay, so not all of us are going to be reaching out to teens. That's potentially not our target audience at all. But I think it's interesting. What should you do when your ideal customer is not exactly like you? How do you reach out to them? How do you know where they want to hang out? It can feel really tough at times and you don't want to feel inauthentic in the way that you're communicating to people, but it's not always viable to simply have a target audience who are clones of you. Now, I do understand that often we attract people who are similar to us. So I know that, for example, you will share a lot of qualities that I have because that seems to be the way it works that I attract people who are a lot like me in many ways and in the similar way many of your clients or your customers will be similar to you but not all the time and you know particularly if you're creating a product or a service with a much broader reach you don't just want clients who are exactly the same as you so I think these ideas, we can adapt them to our own businesses. Obviously, you're not going to bring your target audience in to run your business necessarily with you. That's probably not viable in many situations. However, I do think that there's a temptation just to press on without actually talking to or understanding our target audience. Now, I used to work for an innovation agency where we helped companies have ideas and one of the best things we used to do was called customer shoes and the idea was we got into our customer's shoes. So we were obviously working with blue chip multinational organisations and potentially they hadn't really connected with their clients face to face at all yeah never read never so we went into their homes and hung out with them we watched how they shopped we watched how they used the computer we spent time chatting to them over cups of tea we went on journeys with them in their car we learned a ton of information about them you know what was interesting was that we didn't actually just listen to what they told us in a focus group It wasn't like, oh, I'm here, you've paid me 50 quid and I'll tell you whatever you want to hear in exchange for some biscuits. No, we watched them and we saw what they were doing. So I do think that whatever business you're in, hanging out with your people is so important. So what can you do today to get closer to your customers, to get into their shoes and find out what's really going on for them? It could be as simple as inviting a couple of people for a cup of tea and chatting to them about their lives and, you know, obviously you need to pay people for their time. Sometimes people don't want money, they just maybe want muffins, which is fine too. But really asking them what's going on for them. Why do they do what they do? What's troubling them? What can you improve? And getting to know them. Um, I think it's super important and it can really mean the difference between a mediocre business and a super successful one. And I know which one we all want, right? So, okay, so Jeanette, I hope that's been helpful and I hope you're going to see some results now from getting these guys on board and really letting them lead the way with your magazine and I look forward to reading it and... Yeah, I hope that we'll all be doing some more to get into our customers' shoes and to really be involving them. Oh, and on that note, (laughs) 
lovely smooth segue there on that note if you have any questions or you want to chat to me head over to nadiafina.com you can subscribe to the podcast at nadiafina.com slash podcast you can leave me a message if you've got the business blues or you need help with a particular question you can ask me using the voicemail service on the site or just pop me an email i'd love to hear from you you may recall that in episode four we talked a bit about haters um i told you what happened when i first launched my podcast the other day and how things kind of kicked off from there a couple of days later i had the chance to chat to podcast legend john lee dumas he of entrepreneur on fire fame Um, I told him what had happened and he had some great advice to share and I thought that I should share it with you guys. Hello. Nadia, how are you doing today? Hello. Oh my God, I'm actually freaked out that you sound just like you do on your (laughs) That's the goal. (laughs) I know. Ah, Oh my God, I'm like a bit... I'm kind of lost for words because I'm sort of a fan and now I'm like, ah. Well, I, I'm really glad that we connected because, uh, you know, we have a lot to talk about in 15 minutes. I mean, I'm really excited for the uh, the direction you're in and I'd love to, to add my two cents as I can. Yeah, well, things took an unexpected turn. So Whoa. I know I wanted to talk to you about how to get into the new and noteworthy and all of that, but um, essentially I'm in it and yes. I'm really happy. I'm high up in all the rankings. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. I know. I don't even... I mean, basically, I had a hater, and then I wrote about it, and then there was this kind of backlash thing that happened, and suddenly, like, in less than a week, I've got, like, 800 downloads. Wow, and Nadia. I know, right? And I'm like, oh, shit, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you keep pushing forward, I can tell you that. Little voice, big business. Yeah, so I, I think it's going okay. Like, I, I feel like I'm on the right track. Yes. And I think the hater thing that happened was horrible, but I think there'll probably be more. So, it's a, you know, I don't mind if it was something about my ability to help people. Right. Get business, but it was kind of, it was about my voice. And I was like, that's so weird, seeing as I talk about it. And that's the name of the book. Right. Little voice, big business. You know, that's, that's the thing, Nadia, honestly. I mean, if, if a day goes by without me hearing from some hater, like it's, yeah. it's, it's a ra- it's a rare day. And, and it's one of those things where honestly, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, you're going to get haters. And, and honestly, if you're not, that means that's because you're not impacting enough people positively. So just, just you know, take take the hater and be like, you know, thank you because you've proven to me. Because for every one hater you have, there's a hundred plus people that absolutely love what you're doing, and 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 that is just huge. Yeah. So whenever I have a hater, I'm like, oh, that means there's another hundred people that love me. I, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. So it's not bad if I got one hater and eight hundred people that like. <laughs> So that's pretty good. And I feel like, so I'm on the right track with the content. That's all fine. Yeah. I have a couple of, I suppose my main challenge now is to kind of how to take it to the next level. So with um, the new and noteworthy, do you just stay there no matter what happens? Presumably you could get knocked off. Totally. It is always updating. It's always changing. So you definitely want to just keep focused and, you know, really keep doing what you need to do and not be upset if you like you log in one day and all of a sudden you're, you know, maybe a little, little lower or not there because yeah. in, in another hour and another two hours, like you could be right back at the top. So, you know, you can't put too much stock and you bump it around just know that hey if you're seeing yourself there that means you're getting a lot of new subscribers you're getting a lot of new downloads and just be excited about it and if you're not there the next day just know that you could very well be there the following day and don't like place too much on that because it's not always a direct reflection the itunes algorithm is a huge question mark and you just need to keep driving forward getting slightly Mm. addicted to checking yes that's a problem (laughs) It's a problem we all have. The the reality is you only have eight weeks of this new and noteworthy to enjoy. So it's not that bad that you're going to kind of be a little obsessive compulsive checking. So just realize that, hey, give give yourself a break. Have fun. Check away. 
And then just know that, hey, at the end of eight weeks, you know, that's when the real work begins. You know, that's when you've established yourself, like you have some listeners, you know, you're no longer going to be a new and noteworthy, you know, but the, the reality is you're still going to have that core group of listeners that you built up over those eight weeks. Now figure out a way to continue to drive forward and to impact more people. If you want to know more about Donny Dumas, I will put a link to his Entrepreneur on Fire website in my show notes. And our next episode, episode five, is going to be about productivity. Okay, I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Little Voice, Big Business.